Imagine a poster on the wall in front of you. On one side, you have John A. Macdonald, the first prime minister of this country. Well, on the other side, you have Harjeet Singh Sajjan, the first Sikh defense minister of Canada, standing eye to eye with Macdonald. On Macdonald's side of the poster, you see a featured quotation that reads, send me an army of Sikhs which contrasts greatly with the caption of Sajjan's photo, an army led by a Sikh. On one hand, we have 1867, while on the other, it is 2017. That is the difference that 150 years makes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sergeant Senga from AAA Avenger Squadron, and today I will be speaking to you about Sikh Canadian history. I'm going to start all the way back in 1867, starting with McDonald's quotation that I introduced you to. Then, I will move through the years and through the hardships that six have had to endure in this country, until finally, we will arrive back in present day 2018, where we have our first sick defense minister. McDonald's quotation is from an excerpt that he wrote to Queen Victoria back in 1867. The letter reads, war will come someday between England and the United States, and India can do us a yeoman service by sending an army of six across the Pacific to San Francisco and holding that beautiful and immortal city with the surrounding California as defense for Canada. There are a number of different ways that this could be interpreted. Yes, on one hand, it shines a light on the history of six as being great soldiers, However, we all know Macdonald was a controversial figure in our history. And according to the Huffington Post, this also represents his colonialist attitude in viewing six as simply military pawns. This poster was created by the Sikh Heritage Museum of Canada last April to commemorate Canada 150, but also to get a conversation started. And this poster certainly got me thinking as a Sikh Canadian and it encouraged me to find out more about Sikh Canadian history. Sikhs first began to arrive in Canada, here in British Columbia, in the early 1900s, where they faced extreme racism, often mislabeled as Hindus. They were demonized by political figures, such as J.S. Woodsworth, the leader of the CCF, a precursor to the present-day NDP. He proclaimed that they were decidedly grotesque and sadly out of place in Canada. Mr. Woodsworth was not alone in his views. In 1907, the Trades and Labour Council of Canada issued a motion of emphatic protest against the Hindu laborers. And they urged the exclusion of races that cannot be assimilated. This led up to the 1914 incident of the Komagata Maru, in which it highlighted the fact that Six and South Asians as a whole were treated as second-class citizens within their own empire, as India was still under British rule at this point. To quote our Prime Minister, on May 23, 1914, the Komagata Maru arrived in Vancouver with 376 passengers of Sikh, Muslim, and Hindu origin. Those passengers chose Canada, and when they arrived here, they were rejected. No words can fully erase the pain and the suffering of those victims and their descendants. When we make mistakes, we must apologize and recommit ourselves to doing better. This was the apology finally delivered on Parliament Hill in 2016. Nowadays, six have become one of the largest visible minorities in Canada, with many turning to politics. As I mentioned off the bat, we have our first Sikh defense minister with Harjeet Sajjan, but he's not alone. Bardish Chagar, a Sikh MP from Waterloo, is the first female leader of the House of Commons. And Jagmeet Singh has become not only the first Sikh and South Asian leader of a major federal political party, but the first non-white leader when he became the leader of Canada's NDP. This represents the fact that Sikhs have come a long way throughout Canadian history. And throughout that history, they have not been treated very well at times. And to call it a difficult journey 
would be an understatement. But now with the success of Jagmeet Singh, to quote a Toronto Star article, Jagmeet Singh's success closes some chapters of Canada's checkered history in dealing with diversity. And I believe that with some of those chapters closed, it opens the door for a new generation of Sikh Canadians to write Canadian history. And perhaps in the fall of 2019, we could potentially have our first Sikh Prime Minister, which would most certainly go down in Canadian history.